Many creationists and God believers feel that macroevolution is impossible and the greatest reason why evolution is false. I want to give a brief methodological account of how macroevolution occurs and most importantly its mechanisms. As giving a methodological account of macroevolution substantiates it and shows that it is plausible and rational as long as it has a basis in reality. First we must understand and clearly define what macroevolution is. Macroevolution is evolution on a large scale because of time frame and it results in the formation of new taxonomic groups because of delineated gene pools. That is one of the biggest misunderstandings of macroevolution. Macroevolution does not involve one kind of taxa or organism magically changing into another kind of taxa or organism. One of the most important things we must have for macroevolution to be plausible and true is the mechanisms for its occurrence. Two of the main mechanisms of macroevolution is hybrid speciation and lineage splitting. With the mechanisms in place, it's simply a matter of understanding that for a new species to form, members of one species must stop reproducing with another group from that species. This creates over time such a genetic divergence that they will eventually be unable to reproduce even if ecologically or geographically allowed to, and that's when a new species is formed. Hybrid speciation can create new species because of chromosome doubling and chromosome reassemblage. Several new species have been created this way, like with the core grass Spartina anglica and Helianthus paradoxus. Hybrid speciation has also been documented to have created the new species H. Euripa. These examples show how two species can give rise to a third by hybridization. Lineage splitting shows how a single species can split into two. For lineage splitting to occur significantly, we need geographic isolation between populations of the original species and natural selection on ecology and the mating system. The most common form of lineage splitting is when geographic isolation is high. This is called allopatric speciation. When new species form in geographic range, this is called parapatric speciation. The strength of selection needed for formation of new species is higher in parapatric speciation than allopatric. What we have then is that members of the same species get geographically cut off from each other, abnegating the ability to mate and share genetic material. If their cutoff is long enough, their internal and external genetic differences mount to the point that they become two distinctly different species in appearance and in the inability for them to reproduce together. As we see, at no time is there a magically an immediate change from one kind to another kind, or one species turning straight off into another.